y'all graduate. Amen. Amen. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody and say, check yourself. Amen. Uh, yeah, I left the rest off. This is, and I found out that's Ice Cube that's saying that. We don't do Ice Cube. Only Ice Cube we do is in our tea. Amen. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash check yourself. This is going to be brief. And we all do this. As the end of another year approaches, many will look at their lives and assess where they are in life. How many of y'all do that? Yeah, you start ending. You start looking at yourself, kind of assessing where you are. That's a good thing. It's a good thing to know where you are. Amen. It's a good thing to have self-awareness. Yeah, to know how you are. Do you really know how you are? You know what type of person you are? Do you know that? It would be real good if you did. Then nobody have to tell you or you're not walking around being a certain way that is detrimental to other people. If you know yourself. Amen? So it's good to have that. So at the end of the year, it's good to assess yourself, see where you are, run, run a little check, run a little test, see if you like yourself. Amen? Many will look at their lives and assess where they are in life. Lamentations tell us, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. So let us test ourselves and try our own ways. Man, if you would judge yourself, you wouldn't have to be judged. Amen. Sometimes folks come to you and tell you things about yourself and you don't want to hear. Oh, I don't see that. Oh, I, now I just can't agree with that. Oh, I just, but they wouldn't even be coming to you if you could see it yourself. So sometimes you got to get before the Lord and say, really? Is it really me? Amen. And then ask the folks around you. Ask your family. Ask people around you. Say, I'm not going to say anything. That's what you, you got to start with that. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. You just tell me. Say, you know, uh, what, what do you think? Like, what do you think about me? My behavior and all that. What, what do you think? And they say, <sighs> you know, you do this and you do that. I don't do that. <laughs> then, then don't ask. But you have to be able to assess yourself so that you can be helped. Or you'll get old and be an old fool. The only thing worse than a fool is an old fool because he ain't changing. It's too late. So let us search and try our own ways. This self-assessment needs to be based on God's plan for us and not our own desires, goals, or dreams. So you don't assess yourself whether or not you have achieved your personal goal. You assess yourself whether or not you're where God wants you to be. Now, if you didn't include God in that goal, then you can't do that. But you don't assess yourself by comparing yourself to someone else or comparing yourself to yourself. The Bible said that that doesn't profit you anything. You have to see where you are as far as what God says. His plan for you. Amen? Psalms 26 and 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. So it's God that needs to do the examining to prove you. Are we where God wants us to be? This is the only question that should be reflected on because only God's opinion of us matters. Amen. Colossians 3 and 23. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as what? To the Lord. And not unto man. Amen. Don't do your job for money. Do your job unto the Lord. Don't go to work for money. Go to work unto the Lord. Amen. There are people in this room right now that were one to Christ because they watched you on your job. We have examples of that in here. Yeah. Yeah. 
to the Lord because they watched you. Because you did your job unto the Lord at work. Wasn't complaining. Who the boss make me sick. That's your authority. Oh, this job make me sick. No, it don't. It makes you full. When it's time to eat. Amen. So you need to like what you do. Enjoy it. Amen. You're delivering packages and you don't know what you, you might be delivering a Bible. And that's the day you decide to go off on the customer. Man, take your package. I'm sick of this. He opened it up. It's the King James Bible. Now you want to die. You don't know what you're doing. You don't, you, that's why you got to do it unto the Lord. Everything you do. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. And so when you're doing your job, you never know how God is wanting to use you. That's why you have to do it unto the Lord. So that's a, assess that. Make sure you're going to work with the right attitude. Treating your bosses right. Why wouldn't you treat your boss right? Amen. Your boss is your boss. Oh, no, the Lord is my boss. No, he's not. Not on that job. So whatever you do, knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ. So we're going to go through these real quick. What time is it? Real quick. Five. I always do five. These are the top five questions you need to assess when you are assessing, assessing yourself during your year in inventory of your life. Anybody ever take inventory? Yeah, you look at yourself, look at your children, you look at your family, look at your, amen. Don't always just make it financial and look at your money. Man, I said I was going to be, I was going to have more than this. Well, did God make what you have work? God may have a different plan for you. Amen. Amen. And quit trying to go to services where they prophesying about money. Amen. You can't find that in the Bible. Ain't nobody know how much money you going to get. Brother, I see you with a million dollars. And why is it always a million like Dr. Evil, that ain't enough anymore. One million dollars. That's not enough. <laughs> Amen. I remember we were with some friends, and a dude prophesied on me, and I drove home. I don't know whether you was there. That dude prophesied and said, man, y'all just, you're going to be wealthy. You're going to have this and that. And we drove home, and I raggedy caught our one-bedroom apartment. And I told my wife, I said, forget everything he said. I did. I said, forget everything he said. I'm not, we, we don't want, no. No, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to be living behind the eight, behind the eight ball. Waiting, to, waiting for somebody to hit it and, and, you know what I'm saying? Waiting on the paper and, oh, you know, I have it and, no. I got content with brokenness. Amen. I got content. I, we was in love. We had fun. Amen. Brokenness. If this the way it's going to be, if this what God has for me, that's what it's going to be. Look at somebody. Oh, my path is different from yours, Pastor. My path. We all have different paths. There are many paths to the kingdom. <laughs> the things you are saying, I rebuke that off of my life. I watched the video this morning and it told me not to let anybody say the things that you're saying. <laughs> Nah. The Bible said be content with the things that you have Life is more than earthly possessions Amen And then when you get your mind off of them God might give you something Amen Folks tell me all the time Man if I had your car I'd be in it all day every day That's why you ain't got it Top five. Let me hurry through this. What time is it? Okay. 
I'm trying to short these messages because I'm getting older. <laughs> Number one question, is God pleased with you? Ask, not, ask God that. God, are you pleased with me? God created us to live our lives on earth. He loves to see us do things his way in the earth. You know, when you don't do things his way in the earth, then you're not really serving him. You can't do what the world does and be in him. In order to truly please the Lord with our lives, we must be satisfied. Look at somebody say satisfied with his plan for us. So that's where you stop. If you're not satisfied with God's plan for you, because his plan for you probably doesn't include money. That's your part. You go to school. You get training. You get a job to get the money. You're not going to be shooting at some food and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. <laughs> what show is that? The Beverly Hills. You will not discover that you got mineral rights in your yard. Oh, look at God, these mineral rights. You live in an apartment. <laughs> How you gonna get them? <laughs> Quit that. No, God's plan for you probably doesn't include money. And if it does, it's money to finance what he wants to do through you. Not for you to show out. See, this, is, this message just goes against Instagram. But you got to be satisfied with his plan for you. What, I'm supposed to just be a wife? There's some single women in here like, uh, pass, pass the baton to me. I'll take the third leg. Pass it on. <laughs> you know that track move, huh? That's what you was created for. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Eve was tempted with the devil's plan for her and she forsook God's plan for what the devil said. She was content and happy until the devil came to her and tempted her with more. And she didn't even get more. Her eyes got open and made everything worse now they have to die get sick Adam got to work full time every man has to work full time amen man look at another man and say you got to work full time amen full time Adam had to work full time Bible said by the sweat of your brow part time you ain't sweating ain't no sweat on your brow part time that's full time full time you will sweat <laughs> amen But in order to please God, we must follow his plan for our lives. This brings him glory. He does not allow the devil to share in the glory he gets from us. So we cannot compromise for any reason. You can't please God and compromise. We cannot change our image for any reason. You can't change your image for any reason. If you're a man, you got to be a man. If you're a woman, you got to be a woman. You can't alter your image for any reason. God's not pleased when you do that. We must be men, women, and operate the way he deemed for us. Amen. You're a woman. You ain't getting down on one knee and proposing to a man. What kind of butch are you? And how thirsty is that? Let me ask him before he asks somebody else. You really want to be in that relationship? That's disgusting. So we got to be men. Can't be effeminate men. Amen. We can't take as long getting ready as she does. I sink and vanity chef is full of more stuff than hers. Yeah, man, you're supposed to have a pit.
stick, a brush, and some kind of oil. And that's it. <laughs> 20 cologne bottles. Why you got so much cologne? Where you going? <laughs> men gotta be men <laughs> and women have to be women amen quit lifting heavy stuff let a man do it amen you done dropped the transmission out the car I, I can do everything that a man can do <laughs> why are you doing great feet you're a woman. <laughs> You're a woman. Be a woman. Sugar and spice and everything nice. Amen. Not no pails and scales and puppy dog. That's a that's not a woman. So men be men, women be women. We cannot live in sin. You can't live in sin and please God. Amen. So stop sinning. Stop sinning. Amen. Get rid of your little secret stash. Amen. Well, the Lord, no, I got to have mine. No, you got to have hell. Don't go to hell over that. Amen. Don't live in sin. We cannot harm others. We cannot be idolaters or worship, pledge to or accept any other gods. We cannot be silent and quietly accept the enemy's agenda either. We must stand for God no matter what it costs us. In order to please God, we must give our lives to him as a living sacrifice. This is what pleases him. So if you ask the question, these are the things that please him. Walking, talking, and living a godly life before him is what pleases him. Amen? 2 Thessalonians 1.11, wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. Man, he wants your life to be good. That's why you can't do these things. If you do these things, your life won't be good. He's not trying to stop your fun. Your kind of fleshly fun is costly to your peace going forward. You can't be in peace and in sin. You can't be in peace and accept another gods. You can't be in peace and be a man acting like a woman. Amen. He wants to fulfill all his good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Second question you should need to ask in your self-evaluation. Are you listening to the right voices? Man, that internet got a lot of voices. And I get tired of people sending me stuff. Everybody send me stuff and ask me, what do I think? Man, if you had a pastor, you wouldn't have to ask that. <laughs> Amen. Ain't nobody in here. Folk in here got a pastor. You get a word. You get an understanding of the word. You got all those sermons to look back on and reflect and find the answer to almost anything. When we were growing up, we didn't have to look outside of our churches for answers. See, only a few folks grew up like that, so we're not going to get a lot of hand claps. But that's the way it was growing up. We wasn't seeking and trying to find something else. No. The internet gives us so many voices to choose from. If you are Googling, searching, and seeking out answers, then you obviously have not planted yourself in a good fellowship with a godly leader to follow. Randomly getting the information you feel you need is not God's plan for anyone. Amen. God is not going to hand you a magic eight ball and tell you to go. Go on your way now when you have a question. Should I do it, Lord? <laughs> yes, you should. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, that's some people. Instead of an eight ball, it's the internet. Scrolling. Should I do it? He said no. And then, uh, that's, that's not the Lord. 
Let me find somebody that say yes. Yeah, it's a buffet. You got tongs just choosing the meat you want. God created the church and church leaders to teach the body that is under their authority. You hear that? This church was created to teach those that are under the authority of what we are preaching here. Yeah. And I know, you know, some followed online and all that. Same thing. If you're going to be under this, then you got to learn under this. Because these messages are going to be timely to what's happening with you. When you need an answer, you're going to get it when you come in here. And you're not going to get it too fast. And you're not going to get it obscured. It's going to be clarion. And you're going to get it with an understanding. That's how we grow. Yeah, but if you go off researching, well, you don't ever talk about the black Hebrew Israelite. We had somebody in here doing that. And then when you going to talk with you? God I'm told me to talk about that every Sunday. I talk against it, but I ain't talking about it because it's stupid. Let them talk about me because I'm preaching what the Bible says. You see what I'm saying? Why do I don't have to address every false random doctrine that comes out? That's like asking an astrophysicist, man, prove that the earth is not flat. He don't have to prove the earth is not flat. He the one with the degree. He the one that can go find out. Look, it's getting quiet because some folk in here believe the earth is flat in 2023. Why? Why do they believe that? The internet. But you talk to an astrophysicist, he'll break it down real quick. Man, every time the shadow of the moon is on the earth, it's round. It's a half moon. It's a quarter moon. But it's always circular. What does that tell you? That the earth is round. Look at this telescope and look at all the other planets. What shape are they? They all round. But earth is flat. You crazy. Why do you believe that? Because the internet told you to. But I'm not going to know. I know astrophysicists. I know very smart people. And they, they don't want to talk about that. Man, why would I have to break that down for? That's you saying that. That's like you going outside and saying, y'all, air ain't real. <laughs> Prove to me air is real. Boy, if you don't get your crazy self somewhere. I don't have to address that. Because you're the, you're the anomaly. Amen. So some things I'm not addressing in here, but certain things I will address, and I'll address, I'll address them in the time of the Holy Ghost for your life. You see what I'm saying? But when you go to flipping and scrolling, you'll get hold of something that, was, that came too soon. It wasn't time for that for you. Now your whole family's in disarray. Because what you were learning, you don't want to learn anymore. I know I'm preaching. God created the church for this reason. When we do not settle with a specific instructor, you cannot be fed with the right consistency and regimen that your life needs. This is like a child choosing when to eat and what to eat without an authority's discipline. You can overeat, be malnourished, or starve trying to fend for yourself. The Bible said, as babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. But if somebody bringing cereal and meat too soon, I know I preach, that's okay. God's plan for you and your family. Or your future family can be hindered if you are not submitted under the right leadership. Why don't I have a family? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? Well, are you submitted under the right leadership? And then we grow by how we are fed. Anybody in here grow by how they're fed? Yeah, you eat too much of anything, you're going to keep on growing. And I ain't talking about tall either. Yeah. Well, they say rice is healthy. You're not supposed to eat a rice cooker full of it every day. Yeah, but you have to learn that. But we grow by how we're fed. If we are malnourished in the word, then we will not be prepared to fight for our families, 
and our future. God's plan for you requires a fight against the devil's plan for you. Did you know that? Soon as God speaks his plan on you, the devil comes to fight that plan. That's what makes him a devil. So not being equipped by the proper messages will render you powerless against the attacks of the enemy. If you are to fulfill God's plan, you must be equipped by the right leader. Yeah. Amen? First yeah. Timothy 3 and 15. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, which is the what? The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Can't delete the church. Church age is not over. It just began. And that's where the pillar and the ground is. Yeah, let them do another lockdown and make you think that watching it online is okay. You better get around some people. You better get in the pillar and ground. Pillar, ground of the truth. That means that it's foundational and structured. That means it's resting on a foundation that won't crumble. You fallen folk you've never met, never talked to, just because you think they said something good. And you know, folks like to follow testimonies more than they like to follow calls. Yeah, a true call of God. Folk don't want to mess with that because that requires discipline. They just want to listen to the ex-Satanist tell his story. Listen to the ex-murderer tell his story. And woo, that's powerful. And woo, that's all they want to hear. But if somebody trying to break the word down for them and rightly divide it, they don't have time for that. I just go for the emotional stuff that makes me feel good. Well, that's, that's the wrong diet. That's just like you just surviving off vending machines. Yeah, you just getting the vending machine, the flashy honey bun in the window. You eating that every day. Let's see how long that lasts. Instead of getting some real nourishment. I'm not preaching in here. You can look at me crazy if you want to. I know I'm not crazy. Number three. Are you serving God or mammon? Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Most believers are quick to say, oh, no, God first, then everything else. Nah, but the fact remains that many are following the money. Yeah, following the money. Money has driven the majority of their decisions and landed them in debt in covetous decision making and financial plans without mental, spiritual, and emotional planning. You just gonna up and relocate because your job wants you to? Did you ask God? Did you ask God about the principalities of that area? How they affect your lineage? How your family been struggling in that area since you were born? Your whole family been in the witchcraft and you finna relocate to Louisiana. Every marriage in your family has failed and nothing but lesbians and gays in your family. You're going to relocate to Atlanta. So you ain't checking with the Lord. Yeah. And who are you serving? God or? This is too hardcore for some folk, Jay Bryan. It's too, it's too hardcore. They don't, they, they, you know, they... I'm too deep. It don't take all of that. That's what they say about me. You see, mammon will cause you to position yourself to need more, want more, and take on more than you can bear emotionally and mentally. That's what mammon does. Makes you take on more. Makes you need more. Well, I need it. Well, you need it now because you got to take. You took on too much. So yeah, you need it now. But if you had asked God, you wouldn't be in that position. And then when God doesn't deliver the remedy, because then this is when they come to God, when they full of stuff, then he becomes the afterthought instead of the driving force. This is why the love of money has ruined so many Christians. Prosperity, proving yourself, being better than others will put you on a path that was not sanctioned by God. This leads to compromise and having a disdain for the truth. Folks don't like me because I preach against their money-making ability. I preach against their 10-year plan. This leads to compromise. 
But after all, no one wants to give up what they feel makes them better in the eyes of men. Yeah, I've had to hang the phone up on movie stars from Hollywood. You call me, want some help, but you don't want the help. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you better get out of Hollywood. You better get, you and your rear end better get out of Hollywood. Or one of y'all gonna be left behind. I tell them all the time. And when I, when I tell them that, they just, well, man, but I mean, I've worked so hard to get to this place. Well, brother, enjoy. Why did you call me? I'm hanging up now. I'm going to tell you to walk away. But that's what this does. And it leads to compromise and all of these things. And then you'll start hating people that preach the truth. Many will even begin to oppose truth teachers to justify their love of money, fame, and fortune. 1 Timothy 6 and 10, for the love of money is the root of what? People don't ever finish this. this. There is meat in this passage. Listen, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have what? Erred from the faith and then did what? pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You better listen to the Bible. Question number four, do you love your neighbor as yourself? This is the one. Somebody's like, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Yes. Do you love your neighbor? Do you love all colors of people? Amen. Don't be just loving the China man while you in the Asian restaurant. <laughs> it wasn't racist. Dude, that's the only time you like it. You're talking about them when you're not in there. Don't do that. Amen. You just got to love everybody, every color. When the white man cuts you off, don't you call him out of his name. And black people, when the white man cuts you off, you just go all off into crazy stuff. Uh -huh. He just, he owned it. This is his road. Is he, he about, here, here's my car. Here's my car. You might as well be driving my car. Here's to take all the privileges. You're just privileged. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's That's prejudice. Amen. And I don't even want to embarrass the white people in here for what they think when we cut them off. No. <laughs> if this was a slave ship, I bet you wouldn't. <laughs> Am I out of control? I'm out of control this morning. I'm excited about this video coming out. <laughs> you know, you get mad enough. Yeah, but we can't be living. <laughs> we can't be living like that, man. You got to love everybody. Stop seeing folks as colors and junk. Amen. Amen. But are you racist, prejudiced, or have negative stigmas against certain people groups? In order to love your enemy, I mean, love your neighbor, you must first forgive the ones that hurt you and get forgiveness for hurting them. That's how you love your neighbor. The only reason a person hates other races or people groups outside of their own is because they feel inferior to them. There is something they have or can do that you covet. When we are secure in who we are, we don't care about race, creed, or skin tone. When we are filled with the Spirit of God, we can forgive and get along with our brothers and sisters in Christ. That's every color. Amen. Black, white, red, brown, yellow, whatever the color. Rudy. Amen. Y'all got to love the Rudy brothers too. The Esau looking brothers. Man, I'm not an Edomite, but I'm Rudy. We can even be cordial to our enemies when we are truly saved. This is a tough one for many because they, they feel they failed their self-assessment and are not where they should be in life. 
This feeling caused people to look down on others, be envious and jealous, and even maliciously attack those that are where they feel they should be. Galatians 5 and 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Now how the brothers on the street corner wearing the felt, mortal combat suits, how they sitting on there trying to talk about the law, we got to obey the law and they can't love their neighbor as thyself. Who's the neighbor? The white man standing next to you. Just foolishness. Five, the final one. Are you really saved? That's the good question. You need to ask yourself every night, man, am I really saved? If you died right now, would you go be with the Lord or the devil? This is a good year-end question. This is the most important question to ask because many times we can be around church, in church, and at church without church being in us. I know whole church is going to hell. Yeah, as soon as the music starts, they all just buck and shout with them little suits on their behind. And... Whole service. Yeah. 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 Everything turned into a praise break. Yeah. Yeah. In church, round church, at church, but church is not in them. Not God's church. Churching is in them, but not God's church. They walk in, the organist, oh, the organist's not here today. They just walk right on out. Oh. Yeah. We can feel good, act good, or look good, but not be in good standing with God. We can pass the eye test, but fail the heart test. We can be on the wrong path in life because someone hurt us, belittled us, abandoned us, neglected us, lied to us, cursed us, or violated us. All these things put us on the wrong path in life. And end folks up in hell when they die. You're going to let what somebody did, said, something that happened to you, send you to hell? We can become an enemy of the cross while we feel we are carrying it. Just like the Pharisees in Jesus' time. We can accuse others, blame others, even stone others for their sins and die in our own sin because we couldn't get the beam out of our own eye. We can desire prominence, accolades, acceptance so much that we accept erroneous doctrine that leads us to hell. We can be so hurt, angry, or vengeful that we begin to believe God owes us instead of us owing him, which can lead us to hell. Being saved requires a what? Born again experience. 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself whether you even be in the faith. Prove it to your own self. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus is in you except you be reprobates. Summary. 30 minutes. Summary is short too. Amen. Y'all enjoy this message? Amen. It don't take a long time. Tell them, Xander. Why he get to sit on the front row? You put all the other babies out there because your baby ain't Xander. That's my grandbaby. Just, just in case you needed to know. Just in case that question is fluttering around in somebody's conversations. Only you... I mean... <laughs> see, y'all done... You know, Mess me up now. <laughs> Once you truly experience God's spirit, you will forgive others because you want forgiveness. You will not attack others because you want to see them helped. You will not do things your way, but you will seek God's plan for your life. You will search for a godly leader to learn, grow, and be planted under. You will not shortchange God or look for loopholes to satisfy your own agenda. Nothing. This is once you truly experience God. Once you experience and have a born again experience, nothing will be more important to you than how God feels about you. Amen. So give your life totally to Jesus and pass your self examinations with a perfect score 
every time. Amen? Galatians 6 and 3. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. That's why you got to do a self-examination because when you, just when you think you something, self-evaluate and you'll find out, ah, I'm not there yet. Because none of us are. That's why it's important to do this. So if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Let each one do what? Examine whose work? Other people's work? What other people are doing? How well other people are doing it? No, 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 no. He said examine his own work. Then he can take pride in himself and not compare himself with someone else. Everyone stand to your feet. I feel like this message was needed. Amen. So I'm going to open the altar up for you. Self-check. Pastor, you know what? I do need to check myself. The year is ending and I want next year to be better. I want this next year to be better. The best year I've had. Help me, Lord. Hey, man. And man, I'm going to pray. Let me, I'll do it. I'm going to break the spirit of the world off of you. Searching the internet for answers and scrolling all day. Come on, y'all. You got to be able to defeat that demon. You got to overcome the world. The spirit of this world. Cosmic crater spirit. The spirit of this world. Praying against letdowns and disappointments. Hurt, anguish. Pain suffered at the hands of others. Just praying against it. Self check time. Just check yourself. Amen. And that's the beauty of a message like this. This this message comes so that you can do that. So that whatever trouble was waiting won't get you. The evil one won't touch you. When you come and get it right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, God, for this opportunity of self-reflection. Looking back retrospectively and seeing where we've come and where we're going. Father God, sometimes we get caught up in the wrong things. Sometimes we get fleshly. Sometimes we get caught up in the wrong plans and choices and goals and dreams and visions and different things but father right now we come to you surrendering everything just like the song we sung this morning i surrender we surrender it all to you god we give you our plans we give you our decisions we give you our choices we give you our goals we give you our dreams father god we set them in your hands so if it's not for us don't give it back Give us what you have purposed for us. Give us what you have purposed for us. Your plan. And we will be satisfied with it. We'll be satisfied with it. And Father God, we break, bind, and come against the spirit of this world that is trying to suck us in to sin doubt, unbelief. Father God, we pray against it right now. I stand against it in the name of Jesus. Pray against all internet activities that are detrimental to our eyes, our ears. Father God, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life that comes through that phone 24-7, 365. Father God, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Temper us even in our phone usage. Temper us in our scrolling. Temper us, Father God, in what we are ingesting. Temper us, Father God, in what we are spiritually allowing past our own thresholds, past your gates, Father God, that the gates of hell will not prevail in our lives and your plan Father God will take priority 
in the name of Jesus. Help us to not get caught up in chats and texts and virtual this and virtual that and this website, that website and just all of the things that come to steal our time. Father God, we come against it right now. And Lord, help us to self-evaluate and take this lesson, take these questions and actively apply them to our lives so that we can be better in the year to come and we can be a body without spot or blemish prepared for your coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Come on and hug somebody and say, check yourself. Let the Lord do the checking. Check yourself with the word of God. We're going to do things the right way in 2024. Hallelujah. 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 Keep speaking to us, Lord. Keep preparing us for your return, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.